Hi, this is Ryan Brown from mockquestions.com. In this video, we'll discuss five network engineer interview questions from our website. We'll go over each question and some advice on how to answer them, along with an answer example. Afterwards, if you found this video helpful, please like and share. That would mean a lot to us. Okay, let's get started. Question number one. What is a common way hackers attempt to shut down an organization's network? One of the key functions network engineers perform is to ensure that the company's network is kept secure and always available to authorized users. This requires network engineers to be familiar with various threats hackers use to either penetrate the network or shut it down. One of the more common ways bad actors attempt to shut down a company's network infrastructure is through denial of service attacks also known as DOS. These types of attacks occur when hackers flood the network with a high number of requests. These requests overload the servers and prevent them from processing legitimate network traffic from authorized users. The key to remediate denial of service attacks is to quickly identify them and route the traffic they are creating outside of the network. I also employ preventative measures such as firewalls and robust user authentication to prevent DOS attacks from occurring. Question number two, what are the IP classes that make up an IP address? A key skill every qualified network engineer should possess is to break down complex concepts into simple terms. An interviewer may ask you a question similar to this one to test your ability to do this. They may not be interested in your specific answer to this question, but rather how you go about formulating it. As with most questions, keep your answers direct and be prepared for a follow-up question, which the interviewer will use to explore the topic in more detail. An IP address has four sets or octets of numbers, each with a value up to 255. These are known as IP classes. There are three types of IP classes. Each is based on the first octet of IP addresses and is classified as A, B, or C. For example, if the first octet begins with zero bit, then it is of type class A. Class A has a range up to 127. If it starts with bits 10, it belongs to class B and ranges from 128 to 191. Finally, the IP class belongs to class C if the octet starts with bits 110 and has a range from 192 to 223. Question number three, what are the different ways data is moved across networks? Knowing how data moves across the network is critical to any network engineer. This will demonstrate your qualifications for this role, your expertise in setting up and managing networks, and your understanding of which transmission types are best suited for the networks you manage. There are three ways data is transferred through networks. There are simplex, half duplex, and full duplex. Data transferred in one direction is called simplex. Examples of this are sending information to a printer or another output device. Half duplex transmissions can send data in both directions between two devices, but not at the same time. Finally, full duplex communication occurs in both directions simultaneously. The trade-offs between these include complexity, performance, and cost, progressing from simplex to full duplex. Question number four, can you describe some of the ways you would secure a computer network? Interviewers will ask you about different ways you perform your job for two reasons. One is to confirm that you have the skill set and experience to do this work. The second reason is to see if your methodologies are similar to the ones currently used by their network engineering team. The best way to respond to these is to break down the process into individual steps and explain them in simple terminology. There are several ways I can secure a computer network. It begins with user education and ensuring the users know the importance of keeping their passwords secure and updating them frequently. Next, I install strong authentication software, which ensures that only authorized users have access to the network. I also use methodologies including antivirus programs, firewalls, and VPN technology. Together, all these steps ensure that the network is safe and that the user information and company data will not be compromised. Question number five, 
can you describe the differences between a hub, switch, and router? Describing the various components within a network is a fundamental skill that any network engineer should have. The best way to respond to this type of question is to provide a general description of the devices and then discuss each device's unique features and functions. You should also compare and contrast them, noting their benefits. A hub, switch, and router are network devices used to move data around the network. They are all a type of switch, but with different features and functions. The hub is the least expensive, intelligent, and complicated of the three. It broadcasts all data to every node, but may cause serious security and reliability issues. Switches work similar to hubs, but more efficiently. It creates dynamic connections, only communicating to a designated node. The router is the smartest and most complicated out of these three devices. It is like a little computer dedicated for transferring network traffic to specific nodes or devices. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, it'd be greatly appreciated if you could subscribe to our channel. It really does help motivate us to continue creating videos. Thanks again, and we hope you stick around to watch more interview practice videos from Mock Questions.